Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about the goals of macroeconomic policy. In this video we're going to examine the traditional goals of macroeconomic policy and we're going to look at five particular policy goals that most economists would agree with. The first one is to achieve smooth, fast and continuous long-run economic growth. And this is a particular focus of many governments and economists because continuous growth will lead to a range of healthy activities in the economy such as employment and output growth and productivity growth and so on. What economists assume traditionally is that growth will rise infinitely and there is no ceiling and no cap on this, so to infinity and beyond. But in recent years, what we have seen is that natural resources and the limited nature and scarce nature of these do put a natural ceiling on growth and that we need to rearrange our resources and we need to think more about sustainability going forward rather than just increasing GDP growth at any cost. So we're going to need to think about things like climate change going forward. Number two is to stabilize the business cycle. We've seen in a previous video that traditionally economies grow in spurts and that we have peaks in growth and we have troughs as well. Some years are good, some years not so good, and we have this cycle of growth over time. So what governments and what central banks would like to achieve is a smoother business cycle. And what this would entail is monetary and fiscal policies that would ensure smooth, stable economic growth like this. So growth increasing over time, but at a continuous rate without the fluctuations which cause recessions and so on and can lead to high unemployment levels. Number three is that most economies would like to keep inflation low. If prices start to rise, it can weaken the value of the currency. It can reduce the purchasing power of individuals so that a given wage isn't buying the exact same amount of goods and services after ballooning prices. And we've seen this in some countries in South America recently as well, where the independence of the currency is failing, inflation rates are very high and households cannot buy as much as they want with that given wage rate that they have. It also reduces uh, people's savings over time. So number four then is to keep unemployment low and unemployment and low unemployment, keeping it at a natural rate and lowest level possible is a major priority of most economies right now to reduce unrest and to reduce agitation and so on from a political sense. But unemployment and employment is so important to people's well-being to them. Number five then is to keep government and international debt to a minimum. So what we see here is that a lot of governments as of late have heaped up their national debt level, the amount of annual debt that they have to pay back, and this shackles them to a degree in terms of fiscal policy and government spending and so on. So the purse at some stage needs to be closed and fiscal responsibility enacted, and sometimes that leads to austerity measures. So what we have with a lot of countries recently is their government debt to GDP ratio has increased substantially, and a lot of countries have this level above 100%. So 100% percent and above debt level compared to GDP. So that means that a lot of countries are borrowing to stay afloat and these increases in national debt can lead to hindering economic growth in the long term and especially to using fiscal policy to reduce those business cycle fluctuations. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.